Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In the past few weeks I've made short video presentations on 5 of the 12 Tastapella sites of pre-pottery Neolithic Turkey, and today I'm looking at a sixth, the westernmost archaeological site known as Ayanla Hoyuk. Situated almost due west of San Liurfa, Ayanla Hoyuk was only discovered after land surveys in 2013, and although only a small section of the large mound has been investigated, it's already very clear that this was once a very large centre in the pre-pottery Neolithic world. It's the third largest site identified so far, just smaller than Gebekli Tepe in Karahan Tepe. As you may know from a recent video, we are only just starting to see the full extent of Karahan Tepe, and so far, only a small percentage of Gebekli Tepe has been excavated. But remember the name Ayan Lahoyuk, because this will be another breathtaking archaeological site, and it will be something that everyone will be talking about. The large mound of Ayan Lahoyuk contains six small hillocks, and it's also located right next to natural springs, as well as a dried up stream bed. And this water supply would have been active in ancient times, meaning there was a constant source of water for the Neolithic people that lived there. Today, a north-south road cuts through the site. The mound has 10 metres of cultivated soil covering the bedrock, and pistachio orchards grow all across the land. The geology of the underlying hill is limestone, but there is a large basalt outcrop just 2 kilometres to the east. By 2018, only the southeastern section of Ayan Lahoya had been investigated, but there are at least seven sites of interest already identified from ground surveys, and initial finds look like it was mainly in use during the pre-pottery Neolithic B, therefore contemporary with Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe. Although 10 metres of soil cover the mound today, Ayan Lahoyuk was a settlement that was founded on bedrock, just like the other Tepe sites across the region. It is quite some distance from these other sites though, being 45 kilometres from Gebekli Tepe, 25 kilometres from Navali Chori, 35 kilometres from Hamzam Tepe and so on. So, what have the experts actually found to include it in the Tastapella archaeological zone? Well, as of 2018, when a paper was written about this site, which I've linked below in the description, no specific excavations had taken place. But surface finds include flint and obsidian arrowheads, a stone chisel, scrapers, a hammer, stone axes, grindstones and pestles. These were found in all areas of the mound, giving us an indication of just how big the site is beneath the soil. Fragments of stone dishes were also discovered, as well as this spectacular decorated stone vessel, which has since gone on display at San Liefa Museum of Archaeology. Similar examples are also found at the ancient site of Kortik Tepe, which is one of the oldest sites in the region. I don't know the specifics, but it looks to be made of basalt, and just look at the incredible polished exterior and the detailed decoration. The stone pot truly is a thing of beauty. There was also this head of a leopard, which is a fragment of a larger statue, or maybe part of a decorated T-shaped pillar, which may still be below the soil. This interesting group of hollows carved straight into the bedrock was found on the rocky terrain to the south of the mound, and such features have also been identified at Gebekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe and Hamzan Tepe. This stone fragment is considered to be an entrance gate or window into a court building. And again, such objects are also found at other Tepe sites, including this one from Karahan Tepe. It indicates there is at least one court building at Ayan Lahoyuk, as well as many dwellings for the people. No T-shaped pillars have yet been discovered, but pillar pedestals have been found, indicating that T-shaped pillars are likely hidden below the soil. The fact we find the head of a leopard may also imply that the pillars are as intricately carved as those at Gebekli Tepe, or the stone relief mural from Seybirch, as mentioned in a recent video. Such animal sculptures at Tepe sites usually come from a court building, 
again increasing the likelihood of T-shaped pillars just waiting to be discovered. After reviewing all of the surface finds, the archaeologists believe that Ayan Lahoyuk is likely a large-scale settlement with cult buildings, and when excavations do take place, they expect there will be a huge amount of unique finds. It's likely to be an early to mid pre-pottery Neolithic B site dated between 11,000 and 10,000 years ago, but because of the depth of the soil that covers the mound, it may well have foundations going back to 12,000 years ago and contemporary with the earliest phases of Gobekli Tepe. The few finds are already somewhat spectacular, and the fact the site covers 34 acres, as well as the mound containing 6 small hillocks, is a clear indication of an extensive settlement just waiting to be discovered. This is a site that I for one can't wait to be excavated. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.